inspiredtryourwilderness.com. I am the right way this week. The Facebook app is working. And I thought I would bring you into my home once again and um, give you a new glimpse. I think I'm going to do this every week because we're getting really close and there's a lot of things taking place. Um, I am going to quickly uh, invite a couple people to the video since they have some struggles getting on here. But I hope you guys are doing well and would love to know what you guys are up to. Good morning, Miss Tammy. I would love to know what you guys are up to as far as um, on your homesteads, on your homes, howdy howdy. Uh, are you working in your garden? What are you guys up to? Because I'm going to share a bunch of what we are up to right now. In just two seconds, let me just do a little inviting here. And let's see if I can find the other one. Okay, we'll send that one. Did it send? All right, bear with me a second here. Sorry, and you get to look at the top of my head, I noticed. Sorry, it wasn't. There it is. Okay. You're working in your gardening beds, Tammy is. Holly is processing next year's wood. Awesome. Good morning, good morning, Chad. Just got here. Perfect. God bless you too. Um, I was asking everybody what they're up to. Chad, I know, is busy working on big equipment. Good morning, Miss Diana. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Charles. And let me come down here. And I'm going to spin this around and just show you. Um, I got rid of my big drying rack that was in my living room and dining room and kitchen all at the same time. That big scaffolding is gone. And you can kind of get a, there's not as much clutter, but you can see this nice new wall that I showed you last week and the beautiful woodwork it's bright and cheery today the sun is shining so you can get a better feel of what things are looking like good purging and organizing oh I can't tell you Diana I've got things screaming at me right now I've got to be in front of the computer after I'm done here and I would love to be out in my garden today I would also love to be in my shed and getting rid of all of this excess stuff so let me let me go around here like I said it still looks like a tornado went through but um, it's looking more like a home things are uncovered although they are cluttered um, I did sell my jelly cupboard I delivered that yesterday so my jelly cupboard is gone so the contents are sitting there in totes so it's just a little crazy but um, oh I want to show you the new addition that's what he was working on the day before Easter. And that whole drop ceiling is complete. And you can see the light fixture there that is hanging down and the one that is on the wall. Same light, just uh, worked with it a little bit. Um, the kitchen, we got our little butcher block, yeah, butcher block on wheels and remove that big counter that was in there that was a makeshift two by four counter with an old school table on it with um painter's canvas around it and we have our cabinet doors so this will all start to transform into cabinets as well as upper cabinets um so it's really 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 starting to come along i want to just take you for a stroll up the stairs because when we go outside i will show you what he is working on these stairs, the treads will get replaced. They're just temporary as well as the ones on our stairs because a lot of traffic, a lot of dirt, and that way the new treads won't be ruined. Um, but he is working on the railings today. He started those yesterday. And we have a, he'll have a video coming out um, that'll show you some of the things that he did to make that job a little easier. But the railings will continue up the side here and then around... The whole loft area but what I wanted to show you up here is all this wood that he has sorry I'm moving the camera around all this lumber here um, 
we are having to work with the weather. We have a lot of rain in our forecast, or we did. Um, now it's sketchy. It's hard to tell if it's going to rain or be sunny. So when it is sunny, we jam. And this is what he was working on. He planed all of this. This is rough cut lumber that he milled, and he took the time to plane it. This is all of our trim work. So um, that's something that we didn't have to pay for, guys. And that's a lot of lumber sitting right there. And that's a lot of work, but um, he took care of that while the sun was shining. Yes. I just heard you say a lot of money. Yes. Hi, everybody. <laughs> um, that's probably about all that sitting right there is between $250 and $300 sitting right there in trim. Yeah. That just required sweat and manual labor, right? Yeah. Now he's got a spindle in his hand. Show everybody the spindle. Take two seconds. Show me the spindle. Okay. You can see the twist in the center. And um, it's angled at the top and at the bottom. And he's measuring those to make sure they're going to fit in there. He's going to be building all of this. So it's strategic measuring and angles. Look at the heart shape. Point to the heart shape on there. the wood. Right there. <laughs> yes. I can't zoom it in, but I'll, let me, I can walk closer. Isn't that funny? I've got a bunch of those all through the house. <laughs> Too many. <laughs> all right, so he's, while he's doing that, I'll just come up here one more time and show you this. Um, there's all of our cabinet doors, brand new, heavy duty hinges, slow closing hinges. There's more mess. My office is now still a mess, but I've got to watch it. I'm not killing myself over long lumber but it's all good it's all good the trips the trips across the room are worth it in the long run okay this light you can see how he modified that so that it would hang down instead of hanging as this other one does so when you can learn to work with the things you have and adjust them um, you have lots of opportunities um, to do more in your home and on your homestead, many of you are the MacGyver types or at least willing to try. This is how we purchased them. They are not meant to be hung the other way. This is a beveled side up. Sorry, my finger is not at the right place. Beveled here at the side. So this piece coming out is also on a bevel. So he flattened that to enable it to hang like that. So our $16 lights, I think, look fabulous. I'm just so excited. And the ceiling fan we purchased eight years, nine years ago. It was sitting in a box in the shed. It was finally put in place, and it just looks so amazing when it's lit up. However, we need to get new bulbs. When that is turned on, it pulls 60 watts. When the fan's running, I think the total it pulled 100 and, 180 watts. So a lot of wattage for off-grid homestead. So LEDs in those babies will make such a huge difference. Um, but really, really pretty, looks really nice at night. I mean, everything is just so cozy and comforting. I was going to pick up stone to do the uh, fireplace as well as the above the stove there, but the people wouldn't get back to me, so they obviously didn't want my money, and, and we didn't want their stone. Evidently, the way we look at that is it wasn't meant to be, so left that go, but that's what we plan to do there is to stone those areas and just make them look more rustic and something different and uh, real excited, real excited. Things are really starting to take shape. Um, two weeks we will have this listed. If you know anybody interested in an off-grid homestead that is starting to look just amazing, um, they can contact me now and uh, we would be happy to work a deal with them. <laughs> But we are trying to list it with a realtor um, next two weeks. So I want to take you outside. Um, my garden is atrocious, but I am tremendously celebrating. I have not been able to be in my garden for three years since my surgery because of um, mold toxicity. And I was out there Monday for two hours and I was totally unaffected and I am celebrating also because it was a great workout a lot of great stretching progress I was outside and just doing something that I absolutely love so I want to take you out there and just show you the atrociousness of it but also what I'm gonna do and how I'm going to um, what I'm gonna do this season while we're still here so bear with me here and hopefully we won't I won't lose you out here 
Um, let's see. <laughs> okay, it's too nice to be inside. Look at our beautiful blue skies today. It is just gorgeous out. Okay, I'm back. Uh, hopefully you guys will join me again. Um, my internet connection out here um, did not hold up well, so I am trying this again. I want to show you a little something here too. Good morning again, Diana. <laughs> that was not very nice, was it? Just totally dropped off the face of the earth. So I'm back on here and what I want to show you is a couple things. Um, today's topic is, um, is there a better way? And um, the reason, <laughs> yeah, me too, I'm glad I'm back too, Tammy. That was weird, it just totally dropped off. But I was able to switch to the other, the outside connection, so I should be good for a while, because I don't think I want to go back in, it's too nice. Um, but today's topic is, is there a better way? And, you know, like with the mountain man, he's always looking for ways to improve what he's doing, to make things easier, um, to plan ahead even. Um, is there a better way? Yes, because when you plan ahead, I'm going to show you. When you plan ahead, see that pile there by the trees? Hopefully you can see what it is. It's, it's windows. Those were for our greenhouse. We did actually have the frame of the greenhouse in here. And we decided to take it down. Uh, we decided um, after it was up that we were going to put it at a different place. So two things that didn't get done here that we would have really liked to is the greenhouse and the uh, root cellar. Um, both of which can still be done. Um, but planning ahead enables you to get things like this for free. You know, you keep your eye out and you keep looking around and you you keep alert for things and you make lists of things that you need so that when they do um, become available that you can locate them and easily attain them that's that might look like junk to the average person but to us that's a treasure right there that can be used for so many things and to be able to have these things on hand and to be able to just work on your project is so important and just like with the mountain man turning those lights around you know that's that's why I pointed those out today is there a better way sure when you can find something for sixteen dollars that you know an average light fixture is anywhere from twenty four up and um, something I didn't mention last week is something else we got from Habitat for Humanity is the covers for our can lights. We have can lights up in the loft. We put a can light at the top of the stairs there. There were six of them for 50 bucks, but it didn't include the globes or the covers or the lenses even. And you start looking for those and they were 30 bucks a piece. So 30 bucks a piece times six, you know, that adds up really quick. That's 180 bucks. I didn't want to spend that much, but we went to Habitat for Humanity and they had the covers three to five dollars a piece okay now we wanted bronze ones to match the bronze lighting and to match the decor now some of them are gonna go some of the white things we got are gonna go um, we also got vents that we were gonna paint as well but they're gonna go on the drywall with the white ceiling there so they'll kind of blend if they stay white but a can of bronze spray paint is between four and six dollars so for thirty bucks roughly 30 bucks might have been less versus 180 bucks you see what I'm saying when, when you can plan ahead and you make lists and you know what you need and that way when you run out and you're looking or you're on the Facebook marketplace Facebook marketplace has been a godsend for us we've gotten so many things on there I don't know if you noticed the stools at our dining room table um, those are something I purchased recently only because the stools that we have I can't sit on they're very hard they I couldn't stay sitting there long. So to be able to find these things and sell what you have and replace with what you need, find what you need to continue working on the things on your projects makes it so, so nice. So like I've told you in the past, making lists is very important. Uh, Diana says there is a very large, very affluent subdivision that has a two-day yard sale the first weekend of May every year. We have our list of what we're looking for and we've been sitting aside money for it. Exactly. And you know what? 
there are certain areas where and developments and, and areas in the country, bigger cities, and I hate to put it this way, but this is often what happens. People buy things on a whim. You know, you go into Walmart, you go into these stores, and it's really easy to walk past these displays and be called into them. Marketing is incredible, and you have to have it. So people buy these things, and they still have tags on them. They've never used them, and two years down the road, they end up in these yard sales. I told you before, I got the um, dehydrator I have um, for 20 bucks. It's like a three or four hundred dollar unit for 20 bucks. It was used once. So. It is in your best interest to know where to go and where these places are and, and to make those lists and to, uh, to get the things you need when you can. You're doing the best thing you could, Diana, is setting money aside versus putting things on charge cards and spending what we don't have or spending more than we want to. Um, you know, when you have the money aside or when you can spend $30 instead of $180, you know, you, you have more money to put towards other things. We are very limited to begin with, so to be able to put these, to find these treasures and to put these things, you know, on the list and to get these things and to be able to continue working. We've spent very little money in the inside of that house. It's been more time and sweat and energy than anything else. Um, and it's awesome when you are able to do these things and you know um, and have the skills to do these things. And you know what, if you don't have the skills to do these things, and maybe you're not that kind of person, maybe you can barter with somebody. But the other thing is, is sometimes stepping out of the, the box of fear and giving it a try, because what you might find in doing so is that you are able to do these things. It might take you a little time, it's gonna take practice. I'm going to put that, ha, there we go. Um, you know, it might take a little bit of practice on your part to learn how to do some of these skills, but it's doable. And, and there's so many YouTube videos out there that you can watch and get an idea and see how to do these things. Some are better than others. Some people, you know, may not so much know their stuff. So watch a couple and see if you're getting glimpses of the same information and give it a try. I'm so grateful and so blessed that the mountain man is the way he is. And, and is willing to just step out and, and try stuff and fabricate things and do things. And that is my makeup too, um, as a result of my dad being the same way as the mountain man. And I love, that's, that part to me is like an adventure. It's fulfilling, it's amazing when you can step out and give something a try and accomplish something. That jelly cupboard that I sold gosh, five years back, I think is when I got that, and it was painted, and they had painted over the tin, and the tin is why I was so drawn to that piece. And I, I stripped all that paint off. There was six layers of paint on that thing. There was red, and yellow, and blue, and cream, and white. I forget what other colors were on there, but it got down to the very base paint, which was a milk paint. And I stripped that clean and the lady that bought it from me saw the character in that piece and was so excited. She was going to paint it red, but she bought it too because of the tin. So learning how to do these things and being able to um, have that gratification of accomplishing something that's unique. Um, I love uh, do redoing old furniture. It's just really fun to me. Antiques and just, I don't know, just trying new things. And that's what I want to encourage you guys to do today. I'm going to try to read this here in the sun. It is very bright out here. And I think it was Diana that said it looks so beautiful here. It is. It is just gorgeous. We've had rain and rain and rain and rain and rain. But it's finally just so sunny and so beautiful. The grass is growing like crazy. The garden weeds are growing like crazy. But it's it feels so good to be outside. And it feels so good to have new life and and to be able to do things, guys, I can't tell you how good that felt to be in my garden. The mountain man said he was kind of cringing all day watching me and seeing, I mean, I was just like a little kid out there. I was so excited, so, so excited that I was able to do that, that my body was not in, in pain and that I wasn't suffering from things and that I was just able to do it. So I can't express to you guys enough the benefits of a positive mindset and, and Having a positive mind to say that I am healed, regardless what my body is fighting right now and how I am how I am progressing through this, I am healed. 
my that is my mentality that is what I am working toward I am fighting every aspect of things and I am pushing forward and you know what in in these uncertain circumstances all of you can relate I know you can Diana especially um, who has just been traversing um, this path of looking for a home and she now has a home and you know when you look back from these places you can see how God has been working you can see um, the path you were on you can see sometimes why but to to find the good in it and to just feel so blessed I mean my goodness we have been blessed over and over and over again and so abundantly these last couple weeks I got a new client the other day again it is it is just amazing and um, with my web clients and the rebuilding of things there I'm just excited and I see that as a totally new adventure in the regard that God is building that back up to plant me somewhere where I have an internet connection again and I will be able to do what I need to do and we can still live this lifestyle do this stuff just at a much smaller scale good morning miss Erica hey girl so is there a better way there's I have to say there's always a better way there's always a better way in that if you're in a bad spot you can always turn it to something else we have a choice to brew on our negative situations or we can view them positively and visualize where we're going to go where, where it's going to take us and you know guys I mean like I said to you last week my home is transforming into this beautiful beautiful place if you jumped in late and you didn't see you can take the tour of our home in the beginning of this video so you can you can go ahead and watch that later and watch the replay thank you sweet friend I am feeling amazing and it is as a result of divine intervention that Erica through a friend of hers got me connected with wired for healing and on this DNRS program so if you are dealing with illness chronic pain um, I'm not going to go through all of them because I got to be careful what I say but in the description below is a link to the program that I am utilizing it explains things there um, I am retraining my brain and I need to keep it on a positive pathway so I'm not going to talk about my symptoms and, and the past but read below and tell your friends because if you know people that are suffering there is hope there is life on the other side of this Crystal Barnes this is the brain retraining program Crystal Powell is doing awesome awesome so you are sharing this Erica thank you um, and yes uh, there is great hope and healing God designed our bodies in such amazing amazing ways that we are able to heal ourselves but the thing is I was talking to my friend star yesterday she shared something with me she is on a healing journey too and she and I are both very much like-minded we are very positive thinking people we trust in God our faith in God is so strong and you know we both come across people who have been ill for a long time who have people in their lives that are ill and because of their lack of faith and not believing what is biblical to us they aren't embracing that positivity of what God has offered us and I want to encourage you guys today to to spread that word and remind people that there is so much truth and healing in our Bible and that God has given us such amazing powers of our own to move mountains that we don't take um, part in and I hope and pray that what you guys see is living proof of that because I am gonna move these mountains I am going to win I am healed I am healthy and that is what we have the ability to do we have to speak those positive words into our lives and into the lives of others and help people to realize the powers and the truths that we are given because there is so much in it I mean and I'm gonna jump back I said earlier you know I, I feel so very blessed you know we are losing in essence losing our home but I am granted this huge blessing to get to enjoy this beautiful home that we have until it sells and I'm just so thoroughly thankful for that good morning sweet Joni good to have you joining me yes exactly healed and healthy amen I am a testament I am going to save lives I'm going to spread the word we need to be vessels we need to realize that there is a better way there is a better way you know there is something so much greater beyond modern medicine and and, and big pharma 
Um, we have abilities of our own that we need to tap into. We have natural abilities available to us that we need to be willing to try. And, you know, if I just sat back and accepted my circumstances three years ago, I can't even begin to imagine where I would be today. But that's not who I am and that's not who I want to be. I want to be bigger and better than my circumstances. I want to be bigger and better and happier and healthier. I want to be able to be in this, you know, you've seen me living in this place for three years where, you know, we are um, consumed with medical debt. Yet we are finding happiness in our, our place. We are pushing to be able to sell this and move on to a new adventure. And I know our new adventure is going to be amazing. So I just want to encourage you guys, you know, to step out of whatever place you are in, whatever it looks like, whether it's um, financial, whether it's divorce, whether it's um, health issues, whatever it is, and be bigger than them. Be bigger, be willing to make a difference, be willing to want to change, visualize change in your life, visualize happiness, and fight for it, and seek it, and, and, and know that there are things out there. If I wouldn't have been delving into the things that I have with my health, I wouldn't be where I am. If it wouldn't be for God divinely planting seeds, as I progress in my own research, next thing you know, someone divinely, like Erica, implants information that I needed to go to the next step in my healing you know God is constantly working in our lives and you guys got to see that you guys got to learn to understand that what's happening in your life is is all divine you know whether it's finding something at uh, Habitat for Humanity or being at the right place at the right time, talking to the right person at the right moment. You know, that's all divinely designed and that's what makes it so amazing. And I just want you guys to seek the best and the better in your life because you have that ability. I want to read this to you. All right, Deuteronomy 28.8, the Lord will command the blessing on all to which you set your hand. The title of this is Ask, Is There a Better Way? Almost anybody can spot the problem, discuss the problem, complain about the problem, but a solution-oriented person looks for ways to solve the problem. Murray Spangler was such a person. As a department store janitor, he decided that the only way to overcome the boredom of his job, which consisted of sweeping floors, was to find a more innovative way to do it. Plus. He had the added incentive of being allergic to the dust he was sweeping every day. Then a thought came to him. Instead of sweeping up the dust, maybe there was a way to suck it up. Where do such creative thoughts come from? God, our creator. And since you are his offspring, he will share his ideas with you. Spangler's questions led him to invent a crude but workable vacuum cleaner. He then sought out an old friend in the leather business to finance the manufacturing of his invention. The man's name was H.W. Hoover. Not only did Hoover vacuum cleaners become very popular, but Hoovering became, for at least a generation, a synonymous, synonymous with sweeping floors. Built into every obstacle is an opportunity. Every question, an answer. Every problem, a solution. So don't be afraid to question methods systems and equipment and ask, is there a better way? The world has been enriched by people who dared to ask that question. And you can be such a person, for God promises to bless all to which you set your hand. So when you get these ideas, guys, or even the nudge to try something new, and it keeps coming to you, and you keep pushing it aside out of fear, um, you know, maybe you're that kind of person that says, well, I can't do that all the time. You need to stop saying that. And you need to say, hmm, maybe I should give it a try. You know what? So many of our best inventors failed hundreds and thousands of times. Edison, the fellow that invented Chick-fil-A or created Chick-fil-A. You know, you read the stories on these people that are successful. They didn't, they didn't succeed overnight. And, you know... In our circumstances here, you know, we don't have the money to invest to make this look the glamorous way it does, but we do have the energy and the time and the willpower and willingness to give it a try and to always be looking for things we can do, you know, like those lights, you know, 
I'm like I said, I'm so blessed that his mind works that way, and not everybody's mind does. I have a small portion of that. He, his is amazing, and that's his gift. That's his superpower, <laughs> if you will. My, my superpower tends to be behind a keyboard, but I don't want to be limited there. So I try to delve into things and keep trying. And that's the only way we're going to learn. That's the only way we're going to succeed in things is if we are willing to try. And we don't keep ourselves in this small box, that we're willing to step out of that box, that we're willing to see if there's a better way, if there's a different way. And that doesn't just mean, you know, like on the lighting fixtures or doing some remodeling in your home. It could be with your healing. It could be with your health. It could be with a stronger walk with God. It could be whatever it is for you. But the thing is, you guys can't be limiting yourselves and also telling yourselves that you can't. Because when you do, that's exactly what you're going to get. What we think and what we talk and what we feel are what we create for ourselves. And I have not always been this incredibly positive thinking person. There was a person in me before that used to think negative, negatively. Like I said, when I was flat on my back, I was telling myself I was worthless. And it didn't take me long to realize that those words were not serving me in any way. And that is when I started really paying attention to what I was saying to myself, what I was uh, thinking, what I was speaking. Good morning, Miss Kelly. And you know, we have such amazing powers within us that God has granted us with to pull ourselves out of low places, to, to create a positive thinking person from a complete pessimist. It can be done. You just have to put effort into it and you have to want it and desire it bad enough. We wanted and desired this lifestyle bad enough that we embraced it in such a incredibly crazy way and we want an amazing future and an adventurous future and a future that we design not that the world designs that the government designs that the state designs that people tell us we have to do we are making our lives what we want it to be and you guys all have that same ability you don't have to live off grid with solar power you don't have to live in the middle of the wilderness but whatever your dreams are there's nothing stopping you from embracing them nothing only what you are doing to stop yourself. Because even when finances are an issue, there's still, God can work miracles. And, and if you make the motion and start moving in the direction of the dreams that you aspire and that you feel God is leading you to, doors will open. Things will happen. Guys, I told you about the gift we received in our P.O. box. I told you how the mountain man had the worst trapping season ever and only had four hides. But we, had, we, we ended up with almost $800. God can do all kinds of stuff. And we just need to make the effort. We just need to push, push forward and, and make that, that movement and start working. And he will bless whatever we set our hands to. And it's a truth. You go over to Starry Hilder's channel and you watch her channel and you will hear the same things I am telling you. You... We are walking testaments of what God is capable of. And I keep getting new clients. I've gotten three new clients this month alone. And I'm not working at it. I'm not, I'm not advertising. I'm not, I'm not seeking it even. I've got more than what I can handle right now, but I'm, I'm jamming on it. God just keeps gifting me with them. They are falling in my lap. Why? Because I am moving forward and I am, and I am seeking his will. I am seeking, um, we, we, we know what we need to build and suddenly we have it. I have to work at it to get it, but that's okay. He's providing it. And that's the thing, guys. We need to be willing to see the miracles. We need to make the effort. Miss Kelly, I am so excited for you guys. Courtney messaged me. Kelly and her daughter Courtney are in Arizona right now. Um, Courtney had brain surgery, was it November? Um, she's had it, for many of them, throughout her life. Um, she has a, a brain tumor that was inoperable, so they said. They operated on it and they were able to get most of it out of there. There was a small piece remaining. That small piece is still there, but it is not growing. And she does not need radiation, is what they found out while they were on this trip so far. And as I told Courtney, the next trip down is just going to be gone. So God is a miracle worker. And um, God will not only work miracles in my life, in Kelly's life, in Diana's life, he'll work them in yours too. So such amazing stuff. Um, 
Diana, I looked on Kim's page. I didn't see any new updates. Um, Martin is still in a coma, correct? And is still responding greatly, just not out of the coma. He is holding hands. He is moving arms. He is um, following voices. Um, I'm telling you, he's going to come out of that coma and be totally healed. It is just amazing. Um, Chad is experiencing miracles in his life too. Lots of new business coming his way with his big uh, uh, equipment business, repair business that he is doing out of Utah. So vandalservices.com, going to give him a shout out. As far as I know, things are the same. Okay, thank you, Diana. And Mimi just joined in. I would join but have fluid in my ears and I can barely hear. Maybe next time. God bless you all. Well, that will be added to our prayer list, sweet friend. I am glad that you are feeling better though. Mimi reached out to me. We were praying for her stomach and uh, she is feeling better and improving. Mimi, I'm going to send you two links um, when we're done here uh, for draining your lymphatic system and draining um, your face. As you drain your sinuses and your face and through here, it will help drain the fluid from your ear. I will send you two videos to do that. One is mine and one is another woman. Um, and you will have great relief with that. That's what I use through my whole healing process. So I will send those to you when we're done here, okay? Um, are there other prayer requests? Um, Joni joined her little um, granddaughter was in the NICU unit for quite a while with breathing issues and she could use some prayers. I know she is out. I saw the Easter picture. She's looking very healthy and happy with all of her siblings. But if you could keep her in your prayers, because I know that was the second time around and I'm not sure that they've really gotten any answers as to what is causing that. Um, Alexander, we got a report on last week that he was out of the hospital and out of, uh, he was in there for quite some time. He had fallen at church. He's 90 and uh, he was home for Easter. Uh, if you could keep Mona and Ken in your prayers, they are dealing with some pains um, and, and constant headaches. And uh, if you could keep the mountain boy in your prayers, please. He has a really, really, really awesome job opportunity that fell in his lap too. It makes me want to cry. God is just blessing us so greatly. And you know, guys, the more you trust in God, the more you put your faith in God, the more that you don't have fear and worry, it is just amazing how present he is and how much you see his hand in everything. Our day-to-day -day life is just incredible. I am just in awe. Um, and it's just so amazing. So I hope, I hope if anything, guys, um, that you see God through us and see him working in us. And Miss Kelly has shared with me a couple times now that she feels that when we list our house for sale, there is going to be a bidding war on it and it's going to sell right away and we're going to get more than what we are asking for. And you know, I don't put that miracle past God in, in, even the slightest. It is just amazing what he has been doing and I know that our future is going to be amazing and I look forward to sharing it with you and I just want to encourage you guys to get out, spend some time outdoors today if you can. If it is like this in your neck of the woods, um, get outside. Be surrounded by his beauty and just um, draw into him. Whatever you guys are going through, draw into him. I know we have so many people suffering and battling and dealing with things, but what's amazing is I'm also seeing many of you reporting back to me and sharing with me your miracles too. So it's pretty cool. If you haven't joined us in our community, you can join us by going to treyourwilderness.com slash community. We are growing there. We are building a group of people that are very like-minded where you can go share your prayer requests, share your excitements, and it's not just a Wednesday thing, it's an any day thing. So um, I'm really excited to have amazing people joining us over there and I would love to have you join us over there. And um, be sure to check us out on YouTube. The Mountain Man has, has done a bunch of videos which I hope to get out today um, on different techniques and things he's using here to make home repair and improvements easier to help you guys that aren't necessarily um, the MacGyver types to be the MacGyver types and giving you some tips and tricks on how to do things. So um, check us out there. And I have gotten back out and I am doing some podcasting. There are some new ones out there. I hope to record some new ones in the next couple days as I get out and walk because I record my podcast while I am walking through these amazing mountainsides. So 
I am going to say a prayer here and pop off and let you guys get back to your day. Um, but I hope you gain something from this. I hope you gain from, you know, our trust and faith in God and that you can see how he's constantly moving and working. And I just wish that for all of you guys. I'm going to also share some recipes with you in our community. Um, I made, I finally made Easter candy this year. I've been wanting to do it for years and things just are so busy and with me being sick the way I was, I just, I wasn't pulling it off. Well, I made our peanut butter Easter eggs and I'm, uh, and the mountain man was really wanting his coconut Easter eggs for Easter and I didn't have the time. We, we cleaned up the house at 1145. We finished on, um, the day before Easter and cleaned up and vacuumed and got everything together and, um, I was able to do the peanut butter ones, but not the coconut. So I will share those recipes because what I made is all organic, all natural, all healthy, no nasty ingredients, all non-GMO, and um, they were amazing. I think they, I was told they were better than peanut butter cups. I don't know. I haven't had a peanut butter cup in a long time, but I have had the organic ones and they were comparable. So I was excited about that. So being able to make your own things, do your own stuff, plant your own food, and just live life the way you want to and be brave enough and strong enough to step out and try new things. That is the most important part. And know that you have the power within you to make all kinds of good things happen. So I'm going to quick say a prayer here. Papa, I just thank you for this beautiful weather. I thank you for these beautiful people that join me every week. And I just ask that you wrap your loving arms around them, whatever their needs may be. Be there for them. Give them the courage to know that through you and through trusting you and, and through 100% faith in you, miracles do happen. God does work. God does move. And God does give us abilities that we don't want to give ourselves credit for. We need to be willing to try and and to talk positively and wonderfully to ourselves as well as those around us and just ask it that you be with everyone keep them healthy and safe give them the courage give them the courage also to share you with those around them uh, being able to speak our faith and and to be able to be a testimony to others is such a light in this dark world at times you know if you watch the news and you, you hear what's going on around us, it can be really gloomy, but when you step outside of that box and you create your own thing and you realize who's in charge, life is amazing. And I just want to encourage that in all of you to be strong, courageous, and, and to know that he is bigger and better than anything around us. And I just ask that you wrap your loving arms around them, Lord, and just to give them the power and the courage to do what they need to do in their walk. And I thank you for what you're going to do with all these prayer requests and how you're going to work your miracles and what you're going to do in each of our lives. And I ask this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. So guys, I just want to encourage you to have a fantastic day, a fantastic week. Do something new. Do something courageous. Say something good to yourself. I'm just here for the community couch. That's great. Um, glad you joined us and thanks guys so much for being a part of this community. This is just amazing and I told you before I get so renewed and so filled up every Wednesday when I spend time with you guys. There is just so much power in being surrounded by positive people and I am just so thankful that you guys contribute and are a part of this. Um, you guys are the heroes. So let's just step out into the world today and make a difference. Be willing to be a light. Be willing to make a difference in whatever way we can. Enjoy yourself the rest of your beautiful day. Thank you. You as well, sweet friend. And Miss Erica, I love you too. I love you all. And I'm so thankful for you guys. And I just want to encourage you. Embrace your dreams question things, try new things, and trust. Guys, I hope you're seeing the miraculous miracles that are happening around us. It is just so amazing. Now, like I said, if you did not see the beginning of the video, jump back in and um, watch the beginning of this video. You can see what we've been up to, and stay tuned because that new railing should be up maybe by next Wednesday. I'm pretty sure he's, he's pushing hard. So, guys, thank you so much 
so much. And I look forward to seeing you guys next week. Take care, love you all, and God bless.